Hey everybody, a uh, quick update, got some exciting stuff going on. <clears throat> the Arduino that I had intended to use for this project, this uh, garble controller, if I can stop shaking here, was going to be an Arduino Nano on this breakout shield with the uh, screw down headers. The problem is, uh, if you're not familiar with garble controllers and how it works on Arduino, here's a pinout of it. So the problem that I have with this particular setup is I have three pins down here for X, Y, and Z, three more pins, and then I've got the X, Y, and Z limits are all, all up here. I've got stuff over here, which is great, except that when you go to try to connect these, you know, I've got to have one wire where I split one off that goes to this pin, and one that comes over here, and one that comes over here. So it's just this bird's nest of ugly. Um, so I didn't really like that. The other problem, biggest problem I was having on this though, was that a lot of these require a grounding wire to come in to it as well. Uh, the ground, you know, if you've got four, five, six ground wires coming in trying to go into one or two of these little terminals on these um, terminal blocks, it, it just, it gets really difficult. Um, so between that, the combination of that, and the fact that I'm using a actually a clone uh, Chinese knockoff Arduino Nano. Let's see if I can not destroy it and pull it off of here. Um, so the way these work, there's an AT Mega chip right here, AT Mega 328P, and that is the controller. That's the brain. But in order to interface with this chip, you have to run it through a USB converter which is on these housed on the bottom and it's this Chinese version of it that has the CH340G chip instead of what's more commonly used now on the uh, legit Arduino Unos and that is the uh, let me see it's like an AT Mega or, or AT32U or 16U chip uh, it's a different chip the firmware in this chip um, can be upgraded if it isn't already, but the the issue basically is the communication coming USB, which your G-code program, um, in my case B, C, and C, sends a string of code uh, via USB, goes through this chip, runs into the AT Mega chip. This chip has a program on it that converts that uh, line of G-code into um, pulses and step directions basically uh, tells this pin to go higher or low to tell it you know am I turning right or left and then gives it a pulse under I'm sorry pulse under the direction or pulse under step high or low on direction so every time it gets a pulse it tells the stepper motor move one step in whatever direction um, and that all processes through these controllers here you can see pulse direction enable um, and then you can hook these up to your motor. So anyways, the apparently there is an issue with these CH340G USB converter chips where they're prone to losing steps occasionally. Basically it misses a like it like misses a line of code, which is not good. Um, can cause huge problems depending on you know depending on their program. Or it might just be a little um, minor inconvenience or it could potentially result in a broken tool. No bueno. So I decided um, the current workaround, I get in a sense, or not, the current solution to that is that if you have the latest firmware up, um, installed on the, um, the this AT Mega chip or the Atmel chip, uh, either the 32 or 16U chip, um, you can either upload, you can upgrade it yourself, or if it is upgraded, it basically solves that. On this chip so I decided I'm gonna go I've got one of the I've got one good um, Arduino Uno I mean licensed I and mean, this is the, the legit deal I'm gonna use this for my garble controller um, but with that I decided one for space but also for convenience in wiring um, what would it take to make a shield um, if you've ever done that you know it can be pretty simple um, you can do permanent proto perf board and do jumper wires and gets kind of you know bird nasty or there's this other thing called eagle uh, through CAD soft and it's basically software to design circuit boards 
Um, and I ran across an article recently or a guy that's doing this and it by, goes by the name Osh Park. They basically have a, a deal set up with a PCB manufacturer where uh, they're at this point they're running multiple times a week sending out for panels of proto boards. So I got an Eagle, did a little bit of uh, design work. I haven't done it in a while. It took me longer than I care to admit. And today, less than a week later, I got three copies of a board and a sticker. Sweet. That's going on the machine. So here is, so for a unit price of $5 per square inch, you get three copies of the board. Um, and what I did was basically set this up for my Uno, but it, um, I'll have to solder in the parts, but now I have a nice, clean shield that goes on top, and I have my X, Y, and Z axis headers. I'll be able to put in screw terminals like this, but now it's going to be nice and clean where my wires that go out for pulse step direction and ground for each one, X, Y, and Z, are nice one header um, right here. I don't have to try to have a jumper from you know a wire that goes into this pin and this pin and this pin and then mess with all that. Clean X, Y, Z. I also have spindle coolant um, so when I get my uh, coolant system set up I'll be able to put wires that run out to a relay board controls that off of this I also have um, the probe pin broken out and I have limit switches so now I can just take the two wires from the limit switch and run them straight in to a header I don't have to try to finagle anything it'll be nice and clean so really happy with that uh, especially for the price you can't, it's, you can't beat it. Professionally made, beautifully coated, um, silk screen looks good and clean. I've even got filter capacitors um, in place for the inputs. Um, this side is, uh, on this side, these three will be the pins for the buttons on my, um, on my, basically the console. Uh, so for the reset, feed, and cycle start. So that's, you know, that's where I'm at. I just got these today. Um, really, really, see if I can get this to focus. Maybe turn this off. Yeah, I mean, you can see that that is just, the silk screen turned out great. Um, everything looks fantastic. The plating, it's all good. So we're gonna get one of these soldered up, cleaned up, soldered up, and be ready to mount this thing either in here uh, let's see maybe somewhere in here or we'll mount it on the back of the panel where the pie is the other update is um, chip guards so got this handy little guy here I've had it for a while Arbor Freight special you know good stuff for cheap well depends on the value for as much as I use this it was very much worth it but um, I got made this the other day. Uh, basically, it's going to guard the ways and keep the chip guard off or keep chips off of this section. And as this moves back, it'll actually cover the motor. And then I've got another piece which I think I'm going to use to go like so to actually cover, and I'll be able to bend it and fit it to actually cover completely the motor itself so the motor will stay nice and clean one and have any coolant or chips or anything building up or potentially running down the ends or the sides or anything it'll stay nice and clean one thing i am going to have to do though is on the back side here i need to figure out how to do this section because right now the table is as far back as it will go um, on the y-axis so i need to figure out what kind of a you know, shield I can get to fit for the Z axis for one Z axis and Z bulk screw so that stays, you know, covered nice and clean. Um, but also, as the table rides this way away from the column, um, it exposes the uh, the ways on the back side. I need to cover those as well. So that's a quick update on uh, this week. So